And ladies and gentlemen, what is up? My name is Stephen Hughes. I am back in the mix. It is myself, Stephen Hughes. I am back. Stephen's All Out Baseball Show here on Spreaker.com. And, you know, it's been a long time coming, but I am back. It is the time to come back and start the show. School's out. That means I'm back. Stephen's All Out Baseball Show. The number one hit on, on Spreaker.com's national sports radio station is back on the air and hit it up let's start it back with the song that i started with from from episode number one back in the day Atuna Raza. oh my god it is my song Atuna Raza by damash damash presented <laughs> Back in the day, folks, back in the day, but we're in the present right now. Welcome to the Stevens All Baseball Show. My name is Stephen Hughes. I'm your host for today's show. I got no guests today, but it's all right. On the clock right now for the MLB Draft in 2013, the New York Yankees with the number 33 overall pick. Some people might be saying, hey, you know, I don't care about the show. It's called about the NBA Finals Game 1. You know what? I don't care about the Finals. My team's not in it. Golden State, baby. Barrio rep, folks. But now it's MLB time here in the classroom. MLB, the show. Huh? What? But anyway, this is Stevens All Baseball Show. Let's give you some live lookings into Major League Baseball right now. Just currently, just finished right now. Red Sox over Rangers, six to three. Good game overall over there at Fenway. Uh, Diamondbacks Cardinals, eight, twelve to eight. Diamondbacks put on the score in the ninth inning. They're looking for a comeback. They got the tying runner on the play right now with. With Jack Wilson up to the plate. Danny Delscasso is having a great game over there at Bush Stadium. Three for four with a home run and two ribbies. Over in in Chicago is the bottom of the ninth. The A's and the White Sox are tied four to four. Jonas Cespedes has done a big with two solo shots. And, he's, and those are two only hits. Also, let's go as we go down. It's the Tigers and the Rays. That game is already final. Five to two is your score. As Matt Scherzer, he went seven strong, four hits, one earned, nine Ks in the victory over the Hot Rays. Other games currently currently going on right now in the bottom of the seventh. The Phillies are up five zero over the Brewers at Miller Park. Uh, Brewers are struggling, especially of the uprooting of Ryan Braun's problem with the connection with Val Genesis. We'll get to that in just a second. 5-0 is your score. Brewers with only four hits to the ball game. You know, Brewers, they need to pick it up a bit. They're 13-9 at home. Six games below 500 at home. That's not good. More games around the league. In the top of the eighth, it's a tie ball game. 3-3. Twins and Royals over at Kansas City. Uh, both teams looking to get a win here, a big victory to get themselves up in the American League Central. In the bottom of the six, Padres and Rockies 5-2 over there at Coors Field. After two innings, it is 0-0 over in Seattle where the Yankees are taking on the Mariners. In the top of the second, 0-0 also at Dodgers Stadium at Chavez Ravine as the Dodgers play host to the Atlanta Braves. And a game that was postponed today, the Mets and the Nationals. And earlier today, the first game of the day, it was the Orioles uh, handling the Astros 3-1 to at Minute May Park. The win went to Mike Gonzalez, loss went to Ben Norris. Today it goes to Jim Johnson, a, a, a astounding 20 saves already. And we're only in the beginning of June. Let's go to the straight to the big news. Bryce Harper, injured knee, he is going to visit... The, uh, the famous doctor in all means in all sports, Dr. James and, uh, Andrews on money to evaluate his left knee. The swelling in his left knee is not getting better, so the yeah, outfielder needs to see him. David Johnson said that Harper will visit the doctor on Monday for a second opinion on the knee that has been troublesome ever since the 20-year-old struggle ran into the wall at Dodger Stadium on May 13th. And if... That's actually another injury he got after the stitches he received after crashing into the wall, the chain-link fence over in the scoreboard on right center at Chavez Ravine. News is the latest health blow to the Nationals, who are struggling to tread water in the National League East. 
Well, you have the Braves who are on fire. You have the Mets that are actually doing well with their great pitching for Matt Harvey. And then here, here's some more problems for the Nationals. They ju- the Nationals just placed Steven Strasburg on the disabled list with a strained muscle in the lower back. The team had to call up Xavier Sedani, a left-handed reliever from Syracuse, to take Strasburg's ros- uh, roster spot. Dave Johnson also said that knee, uh, Harper's knee was swollen after some light jogging in the pool Thursday. The injury has been diagnosed as bru- uh, bru- uh, bru- uh, Bruce, but hasn't, uh, but hasn't responded to any anti-inflammatories yet. Harper is eligible to come off at the 15 DL on Tuesday, but he said he'll need to play a couple of rehab games of the Myers test the knee. The NL Rookie of the Year dismissed any thought of having a cortisone shot to help him get back onto the field. Harper leads the Nationals with 12 home runs, 287 batting average, and also has driven in 23 ribbies on the year. In news today, pretty much, uh, with Strasburg a sideline, Xavier Sedano's recall was meant to be a temporary measure because the Nationals are going to promote a starter for Saturday's game against Minnesota, which was Strasburg's place. Thursday night against the Mets, it was postponed, allowing David Johnson to move Gio Gonzalez, who is also connected to the Biogenes controversy, which we'll get to in just a second, moved to Friday, and Nathan Carnes is moved to Friday to Saturday. Jordan Zimmerman would then pitch on regular rest on Sunday, although the in, the entire three-game series against the Twins could be affected by rains from tropical score Andrea, unfortunately. Johnson said that another starting pitcher on the DL, Ross Ditwiller, is scheduled to make a rehab start at single-A Pomatic on Saturday. So, ups and downs over there at the nation's capital, but, you know, that's pretty much what you get from, you know, you know, anything. It can happen any way, shape, or form. And like I said, Biogenesis Connection, we are on right now. Alex Rodriguez, he's not really making a huge statement, but he did have this to say about the problems surrounding him, Ryan Braun, and 18 possible other players in these in this Biogenesis situation with Mr. Bosch along with the ride. This is what he said, quote, myself and others are being mentioned in a media report before the process is even concluded. I would hope this thing would follow the guidelines of our basic agreement. I will monitor the situation and comment when appropriate. As I've said previously, I'm working out every day to get back on the field and help the Yankees win a championship. I'm down here doing my job and working hard and will continue to do so until I'm back playing and quote this report this statement coming from ESPN uh, from outside lines two days uh, after ESPN learned that MLB will try to attempt the star and about 20 others linked to the Biogenesis of America and Tony Bosch the now Shuttered Clinic's founder Tony Bosch reached an agreement this week to cooperate with Major League Baseball investigators investigators, giving baseball the uh, ammunition officials believe they need to suspend the players. One source, uh, one source familiar with the case told Outside the Lines a show and a report for ESPN that Commissioner Buzz Siegel's office might see 100 game suspensions for Rodriguez, Ryan Braun, and other players the penalty for a second doping offense. The New York Daily News reported Friday that Rodriguez denied Bosch's request for financial assistance after MLB filed a lawsuit against him in March. The Daily News citing a source reported that Rodriguez rebuffed Bosch's request for money, reportedly hundreds of thousands of dollars. After that, Bosch had to go to Major League Baseball. And Major League Baseball now has gone straight to Federal Express like FedEx, AT&T Mobility, and T-Mobile USA in an attempt to gain records for its investigation of players suspected of using performance-enhancing drugs. The Saponiers were issued May 23rd, according to a civil case file in Florida's Circuit Court for Miami-Dade County, where MLB sued Biogenesis of America, anti-aging clinic head Tony Bosch and five others in March. MLB asked FedEx to turn over shipment records for Biogenesis, Bosch, the other defendants, and a long list of individuals who appeared to be affiliated with Bosch. MLB asked the phone companies for call records, texts, and subscriber info for the phones of Juan Carlos Nunez, an associate of outfielder Melky Cabrera, who was banned from from Major League uh, clubhouses last year after his 50-game suspension while with the San Francisco Giants, and Porter Fisher, who was affiliated with the now-closed clinic. Well, 
As long as Bosch cooperates, he'll be dropped from the lawsuit, but Major League Baseball is likely to keep everything going, which is why they've subordinated documents. If, if Bosch turns over his own records, he'll be dropped from the lawsuit. The subordinate is also to look at documents that Bosch may not ha might not have. This is what company spokesman Scott Fielder has said about FedEx and his cooperation with Major League Baseball investigators. Quote, FedEx complies with all valid subonies, and we are unable to comment further. Uh, from spokes, uh, most, uh, spokesman Marty Richard from AT&T, respond to all lawfully issued subonies. For T-Mobile, the spokeswoman Annie Marshall said the company is looking to, into the request and has no comment. So nothing's really going anywhere with this, but in the next week or two, we'll get more information, maybe from any of these companies, maybe more from Tony Bosch, maybe even more from the players themselves on if they did this or not, if Tony Bosch is right, or if these players should receive a 100-game suspension for their involvement in a second use, in a second offense of performance-enhancing drugs and you know let's take a break folks when we come back we'll give you more about this situation i can possibly get in a, a guest caller as we come back to Stevens all baseball show here on spreaker.com affiliation with the national sports radio station Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Steven's All Out Baseball Show. My name is Steven Hughes himself, and let's go back to Biogenesis of America. This company is is foreknown as a former anti-aging clinic uh, lo uh, located in Coral Gables, Florida. That obviously relates to a bunch of places for Major League Baseball players like A-Rod and Ryan Braun. Here's a background of Biogenesis of America located in Florida. Um, according to the company, it specializes in weight loss and hormone replacement therapy. The company was first registered in the state corporation records on March of 2012. The clinic was founded by Tony Bosch himself, who was also listed as the pro program's director. His father, Dr. Pedro Bosch, was listed as the medical director. And Bosch's younger brother, attorney Ashley Bosch, was listed as managing member. Several employees quit in the fall of 2012 after they were not paid. The clinic closed months later in December. But with this scandal brewing now, the 20 Major League Baseball players were accused of obtaining performance-enhancing drugs from the company. An ex-employee provided the Miami News Times with records from the clinic, which the newspaper wrote are clear in describing the firm's real business, selling performance-enhancing drugs. March 2013, like I said earlier, MLB sued six people and connected the clinic, accusing them of damaging the sport by providing banned substances to its players. So, this could relate to the Balco scandal, along with Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens, Andy Pettit, for providing banned substances to players during their time, their tenure, uh, 
pretty much at their prime of their major league career. So that's the background for Biogenesis of America. Obviously, it did not really go out for a very long time. It was a company that lasted all but nine months, closing and then having this a brew uh, and making real news for themselves in a very infamous way, unfortunately, for both the Biogenesis of America and for Major League Baseball. Let's give you a score center alert. Uh, top of the 10, we're going to extras. The A's and the White Sox have gone a, a lead. Is the A's with a 5-4 lead over the White Sox. In the middle of the 8th is still 5-0 over at Middle Park. Phillies over the Brewers. In the bottom of the 8th is 5-3 now as the Royals are taking the lead over the Twins at Royal Stadium. In the top of the 7th, Padres 5. Rockies have tacked on another run. It's only 5-3. to three. It's still anyone's game in the top of the 7th. In the top of the 3rd, the Yankees have scratched out 4 runs in the top of the 3rd, making it a 4-0 game and making it difficult on pitcher Aaron Harang for the Mariners. In the bottom of the 2nd, the Dodgers tack on a run over Tim Hudson. It's 1-0 at Shadows Ravine. And others in the game that uh, other games that went final, Cardinals twelve, Diamondbacks eight. Winner in that one at Bush Stadium goes to the Cardinals. Home runs from teams themselves. Um, it's only all the home runs came from St. Louis. Matt Holiday scored, uh, hit one. Daniel Descalso hit one. Uh, Matt Carpenter hit one. Mike Adams hit one. And that's about it, folks. Um, alert on the Mets Nationals postponed game this game has been postponed due to rain and there will be a double header in part on july 26 so not be make made up very very soon but it'll be made up in about a month and 20 days so for those fans you can tough it out i think um <laughs> anyway let's go to the big mlb news Outside of Genesis, the MLB draft, the first year draft, and our Mark Appel is now happy. This time last year, he was supposed to be number one overall pick. He didn't get number one or number two or number three. Hell, he didn't get number seven. He got number eight. He got he had the Pirates right on the plate, $3.8 million, almost $4 million to sign a contract to play in the minor leagues. Four, almost $4 million. But well, he decides to go back to Stanford. Carlos Correa was picked number one over the uh, for the Astros. He's still in single A. This year, he decides to come back. He, he makes a bigger statement for himself. And the Astros, who passed him number one last year, made the right decision this year and chose him as the number one overall pick in the 2013 MLB Draft. And they couldn't resist pretty much. Houston selected the hard-throwing Stanford pitcher with the top choice of the Major League Baseball draft Thursday night. Um, this is what Astros general manager Jeff Lunau said about the pick. I talked to him and told him, welcome home. It's a kid's dream to go first in the country, first in the draft, and to be taken by your hometown team. It doesn't. It just doesn't get any better than that. It also get really. It's also really a great opportunity for us, end quote. Pell grew up in Houston before moving to California when he was 12. Slid to Pittsburgh at number eight last year, but turned down the $3.8 million offer and returned to Stanford for a season, for a, for a season, senior season. Pardon me. Uh, Appel's stats uh, for the Cardinal this year: he went 10 and 4 with a 2.12 ERA, struck out 130 and 106 in the third innings. That's a ridiculous number. About more than. 1.3 in any. That's amazing. The 6'4", 195 Pell is expected to fetch about $2 million more million than he passed on with the Pirates with the bonuses he receives as a first round pick, as a first overall pick. The deadline for teams to sign draft picks is July 12th, which is only a month and a week, uh, one month and a week away. But that doesn't apply to Appel because he is a college senior. So, a little more leniency on the college seniors in the draft. The draft, which is held over three days and 40 rounds, started Thursday night with the first few rounds at the MLB Network Studios in New Jersey. It was the second straight season that the first round pick was uncertain going to the draft with Oklahoma right-hander Jonathan Gray and a pair of college third baseman North Carolina's Colin Moran and San Diego's Chris Bryant thought to be in the mix for Houston. It was the fourth time Houston had the number one overall pick. They joined Tampa Bay in 2007-2008 in Washington in 2009-2010 as teams who have the top selection in consecutive years. 
The draft order is determined by reverse finish, worst to best, in overall standings from last season. With number two overall pick, the Chicago Cubs selected Chris Bryant, who actually leads Division I college players with 31 home runs this season. The 6'5", 210-pound junior is a Golden Spikes finalist in the Collegiate Baseball Magazine's National Player of the Year. He leads the nation with 66 walks, 80 runs scored, and an 820 slugging percentage. That is incredible. For Jonathan Gray, he selected third overall to the Colorado Rockies. The 6'4", 245 flamethrower helped pitch the Sooners into the Super Regionals at the NCAA Tournament, in which Oklahoma will be taking on LSU. Coverage starts tomorrow on ESPN, ESPN2, and ESPNU. Those networks applying with ESPN. Going 10 2 with a 1.59 ERA right and 138 strikeouts in 119 innings. He throws a fastball in the mid, or, uh, mid to upper 90s, reaching 100 miles per hour at times with an effortless delivery. Colorado apparently was not scared off by published reports that said un, un, unidentified sources who said Gray, a couple days ago, tested positive for the medication Adderall during baseball's pre draft drug testing program. Gray said about a uh, Gray said about this. I'm not going to talk about that right now. There will be uh, there will be a time for that right now. I'm just happy to be selected by the Rockies. The first high school player picked was pitcher Cole Stewart, who went to the Minnesota Twins for the fourth overall pick. The right-hander from Tom Ball, Texas, Stewart was signed to play baseball and football at Texas A&M, where he would likely be a backup to Heisman Trophy winner Gianni Manziel. The Cleveland Indians followed by grabbing Clint Frazier, a high school outfielder from Georgia who was in the building to hear his name called by Commissioner Bud Selig. Clint Frazier said, I've had a lot of people tell me I'm going to be a fan favorite because of my red hair. People may, uh, put me on a pedestal like no one else had what, has what, red hair. Out of the nine product specs in attendance, Frazier was the first to be selected. The second came from when the New York Mets chose sweet swinging California high school pit, uh, first baseman Dominic Smith out of Sarah, Unipedo Serra High School, not the one in San Mateo, California, where Tom Brady Barry Bonds went, but over in Gardena, California, in Southern California. He was chosen 11th overall by the New York Mets. Five picks later, Philadelphia took Smith School's buddy, California high school shortstop J.P. Crawford, cousin of Carl Crawford, who was also at the MLB New York Studios. The two hugged with Smith in a mess jersey and Crawford wearing a Phillies jersey in a neat scene that also might have some New York and Philadelphia fans squirm with the rivalry in the NL East. Crawford acknowledged that he could be the future replacement for all-star shortstop Jimmy Rollins. Uh, speaking of Colin Moran, uh, he was supposed to be a top three pick. The nephew of former big league all-star B.J. Suroff, number one overall pick in the 1985 uh, draft by Milwaukee, went six overall to the Miami Marlins. Moran was, a, was the ACC Player of the Year, a Golden Spikes Award finalist, and led the offense for the NCAA's number one overall seed. How about that? Uh, North Carolina will be taking on South Carolina in their super regional. Uh, North Carolina will be hosting their uh, will be hosting uh, that super regional at Chapel Hill. Also, those games will be on Friday, Saturday, if necessary, Sunday on ESPN, on ESPN Two, and the ESPNU Network. He's saying 348 with 13 home runs, 86 RBIs as they're heading to the super regionals. So, everything about the MLB draft is over. Uh, just the drafts are continuing um, right now. The draft probably still going out, uh, still going on. Part of me, um, a little alert if you guys are now listening or watching to the um, NBA Finals. Heat seventy nine, uh, seventy two, Spurs sixty nine. Pretty close game. I don't care. <sighs> I just don't care. It's baseball season. It is baseball season. But um, actually, it does look like um, yes, it does look like the MLB draft, the first two rounds, which was supposed to be covered today, is finished. Some updates around the Major League Baseball scoring uh, scoring line: A's and White Sox going to the bottom of the tenth, five score or five four is your score. Seven three, Kansas City has the lead over Minnesota, going to the top of the ninth. 5-1 Philadelphia, Milwaukee ta- uh, taxing on a score in the, as the uh, end of the 8th is very soon. 5-3 is your score in Colorado, San Diego still with the lead. New York is still tacking on some runs at the top of the 3rd. It's now 6-0 in Seattle. Uh, now is top of the 3rd, 1-0 still in Los Angeles. Dodgers have the lead 
over the Braves. And when we come back, we'll get the finishing touches on the show, some injuries from Jacoby Ellsbury, Derek Jeter alert, and just a little recap of what you've got, you guys seen in the first 10 fused games. Ugh. It's a lot of games, folks, but I'll be covering it all, folks. Seems all baseball show. We come back in 30 seconds with those around the league. Welcome back, folks, to Seems All Out Baseball Show here on Spreaker.com in affiliation with the National Sports Radio Station. And I was I told you guys about the DL and how much fun the DL is to talk about. First, let's go to Boston. Jacoby Galesbury is back in the lineup today after sitting the fast five games of the groin injury. Red Sox manager John Farrell said Wednesday he thought he needed to get Ellsbury to 80% or better intensity level before putting him back in the lineup. Ellsbury injured the groin in last Thursday win over Philadelphia, during which he recorded a team record five stolen bases. Ellsbury was 11 for 23 with five extra bases and seven steals in five games before suffering the injury. Rookie Jackie Bradley Jr. started five games of center field in Ellsbury's place. Derek Jeter. Let's go over to New York now. We'll be having his ankle examined in next uh, next week. Jeter hasn't played this season after breaking his left ankle in the playoffs last year and having surgery. He sustained another fracture during his rehabilitation and isn't inspected back until after the All-Star break in mid-July. Jeter moved his rehab program on Thursday from New York to the Yankees' minor league complex in Tampa, Tampa, Florida. He recently had been working out at Yankee Stadium. 13-time All-Star turns 39 this month. He'll have a CAT scan and will be clear, uh, be examined by Dr. Robert Anderson in Charlotte, North Carolina. The team captain says he hopes to be cleared to increase his baseball activities. Jeter said, I can't do anything different until I see the doctor, so absolutely no news. I wish I could do more, but I cannot until I go to the doctor. So a little bit of news in San Diego. Cameron Maven has been reinstated, and, and but... Padres, you know, placed another guy on the DL. Yonder Alonso has been placed on the 15-day DL. The moves were made before the Padres played the Colorado Rockies today, in which they have a lead 5-3. Maven was hitting 0-91. So, point zero nine one. That's god-awful. For the Padres before going to the stable list on April 17th with a wrist injury. He batted 323 in nine rehab games at Triple-A Tucson. Alonso was placed on the DL with a bruised right hand, a move that was retroactive to June 1st. Alonso has six home runs and a team leaning 29 ribbies. This season he hasn't made an appearance in a game since May 31st when he suffered that injury. So let's go to recent DL placements of La- around the league. Jake Peavy has been, uh, he left the game uh, two days ago with rib pain. He is day to day. Johnny Cueto. June 1st, he placed on the DL, 15-day DL, with a strained right shoulder. As Drew Cabrera for the Cleveland Indians, he's also placed on the 15-day DL with a right quadriceps strain. Unfortunately, that'll be bad. Uh, Colorado Rockies starting pitcher Tyler Chatwood left the game with a right tricep soreness. He is day to day. Um, four days ago, Garrett Richards, pitcher for the Angels, left the game with an ankle injury. He is also day to day. Two, uh, actually, pardon me, three injuries for the Rockies. Mark Ellis, he has a groin injury. He is day-to-day. Carl Crawford, strained left hamstring. He is on the 15-day DL. And Hyun Jun Rui, the, stand- the standout uh, import left-handed pitcher, he has a sore foot day-to-day. 
Uh, in Milwaukee, Marco Estrada, left-handed pitcher, strained left hamstring. Right he's on the 15-day DL. For Minnesota, Justin Morneau, he has an illness. He is day today. Uh, for the New York Yankees, Chris Stewart left the game with dehydration. Wow, dehydration. He's day today. For Pittsburgh, Jamar Gomez, right forearm tight end. He's on the 15-day DL. Also, uh, the Pirates put on the same day on June 3rd. Phil Irwin. Right arm fatigue on the 60-day DL. In San Francisco, Angel Bogan is day-to-day with his still the mild hamstring strain. That's a problem for him. He has been mass, he's been missing the last 11 games, unfortunately, for that. Jesus Montero, torn left meniscus, but he's day-to-day. He's a man. Uh, Tampa Bay, Kelly Johnson, left fielder. He has back stiffness. He is day-to-day. Texas, Mitch Moreland, first baseman. He left the game with a strained left hamstring. He's day-to-day. Also, Andrew Beltre on June 1st left the game with a left hamstring tightness. He is also day-to-day. Ramon Ortiz, right elbow strain. He's on the 15-day DL. And Brandon Mora, right forearm strain. He's also on the 15-day DL for Toronto from uh, in the span of June 1st to June 3rd. And lastly, Washington put on the DL Danny Espinoza, Steven Strasburg, and Bryce Harper in, in, in the last week and a half. That's ridiculous. Um, Danny Espinoza, broken bone and right wrist. Steven Strasburg, uh, like I said, strain right uh, lat. And Bryce Harper, left knee bruise, like I said. Um, these stats brought to you by Stats, LLC. Uh, any commercial use of distrib- uh, distribution without the express rent because of SAS LLC is strictly prohibited. Um, also, this page comes from the New York Post. Get your New York Post. Uh, eight weeks free. Start home delivery now when you sign up for New York Post home delivery today. And lastly, to finish off the show, it's the standings. Always, it's a little classic ending to the day. As let's start with the American League East, Boston. Who would have thought Boston would be in first place? Who would have thought the New York Yankees would be in in the top three after their injury-filled beginning of the year? But Boston is in first place. New York is in second place, a game and a half behind the sacks. Orioles, they're two games behind. It's a tight race for the number one spot as there's a four-way you know battle. Boston, New York, Baltimore is only two games back, and Tampa Bay is only three and a half. Then to round it out, Toronto... Had a big, great, it seemed like a great off season. They are 25-34, nine games below 500, and ten and a half back at the sacks. In the AL Central, the Detroit Tigers have always taken advantage of the beginning of the year, and they are already at it. Six games above 500. That doesn't sound really nice, but they have a two and a half game lead over the Cleveland Indians, who are a game above 500, which is a surprise. They are two games be a two and a half games behind the Detroit Tigers, which is also big. But Cleveland has lost four in a row, so hopefully they they can just get off that streak and beat the Tigers. Woo! Uh, to round out the AL Central, Minnesota, 26 and 35 games back. Chicago White Sox, 25 and 32, six and a half back. And Kansas City, to at the bottom of the AL Central, seven games behind uh, seven games behind the Detroit Tigers, 24 and 32. In the new AL West, the Texas Rangers has a are 14 games above 500, but they're only a game and a half back from oh yet again the Oakland A's. <laughs> Unbelievable, Texas, you need to grow up. You gotta get better. Come on, if you get if you're losing guys and you're trying to get guys, and then you have the A's who are the who like Brad Pitt said in Moneyball, we have the Yankees, you have the dirt, you have a shit pile of you have. 30 feet of just crap. And then you have the A's. Then why are the A's a game and a half behind the Texas Rangers? Also, why are the A's eight and a half games, or uh, pardon me, nine and a half games above the Angels? Please tell me that. Please, in Southern California, tell me why the Dodgers and the Angels are just garbage right now. They are garbage. It is um, it's so funny. It is, they are garbage. They are trash. Angels, trash. Dodgers, they're just injured. Everybody's injured. It's so it's so funny. Like Pug, who's Yanzel Pug? He's made two games, 
and he's supposedly the next like Gary Sheffield. This is what you get in Los Angeles, folks. You get great off seasons and shitty performances. Boom. Angels in third place there, eleven games back, along with the Mariners, who can't who don't have anyone. They have Jason Bay. Seattle has Jason Bay. The Angels have Josh Hamilton. And they had the same record. But Houston rounds out the AL West. They are 15 and a half games behind the Rangers. They are three and a half games behind the Angels. That is unbelievable. That is, that is you know, God please send the Astros to third place. <sighs> but Astros are 17 games below 500. It's, it's ugly. In the National League East, Atlanta, 37-22. They have had an amazing start. Philadelphia, seven, seven and a half games behind the Atlanta Braves. Uh, Nationals, they're injured, so they don't really suck. They're, just, they're pretty good. They've just been injured a lot. I'm not really concerned about them. When they get the players back, they're going to be manly. To round out, Mets, they had a great start. Then they shit the bed. Two in games below 500, 23 and 33. They're 12 and a half back of the Braves. And then the Miami Marlins. Why are they even trying? They have, they have 16 wins. I feel bad for Gene Carlos Stanton. I don't know what he's even doing right now. Just sitting home, relaxing. And he's telling himself, maybe I should have been a part of that Toronto Blue Jays trade. That sent my entire team. Oh, wait. Yeah, Jose Reyes is gone. He wants Toronto. Um, Mark Burley's gone. Josh Johnson's gone. Uh, hey, yeah, let's go team. Let's go win some ball games. 16 games. We've won in what? 70 games played or 16 wins in 60 games. That's god awful. And El Central, St. Louis 38 and 21, Cincinnati 36 and 24, not so bad, two and a half back. Pittsburgh, they're not doing so bad. They have they're 10 games above 500, three and a half back, but Hopefully they don't have the crappy second half of the season which they've had the last two years and which they sparked really a lot of joy in the CO City. Then they just have a big letdown. Cubs, nine games back. Uh, pardon me, nine games below 500, 13 games back. The Milwaukee is 22-36. They're actually going to be 22-37 after the loss against Philadelphia tonight. They're 15 and a half back. Who would have thought of that? I think Milwaukee's a decent team, but I didn't know they were going to be like, like, you know, Kansas City crap, you know. But anyway, and then lastly, the NL West. I'm glad I'm sorry. I ending with the NL West. The Arizona Diamondbacks and the Colorado Rockies, the San Francisco Giants, and the San Diego Padres. That's the top four. That was the top four in the NL West. I, I like to have San Francisco on number one. That's That's about it. I like Arizona. Arizona's honestly a good team. They they got some good pickups. They got Cody Ross. They got Brandon McCarthy, who some some teams were a little bit skeptical. He got injured and they're worried that, you know, that injury's gonna, you know, be a factor in their decision signing him. Arizona wanted him and they got him and he's good actually. Not that bad. Arizona's seven and three in the last ten. That's pretty good. For San Francisco, they're three games back, but they're three games above 500. So once they get Angel Pagan back from that hamstring injury, hopefully things go well over the city by the bay. For Colorado, they're 32 and 28. They're pretty good this year. I don't know why. It's, I guess a new manager or something, but honestly, like things are starting to get more organized in Colorado. It's weird, but you know they'll have to do better on the road. They're two games below 500 on the road. But they're losing right now to San Diego, which are in fourth, 27-32. They're probably going to get win number 28. Uh, they're 16-14 and 14 at home, 11-18 on the road. A little bit of a surprise. San Diego isn't that bad, but, you know, they need to fill in a bunch of holes. They need to get some, they need to get some money and pick up some guys like they did with Adrian Gonzalez. And then lastly, in last place, my favorite, the Los Angeles Dodgers. Those Dodgers are really doing great. 25 and 33, eight and a half behind the Arizona Diamondbacks. Six games behind the Colorado Rockies, who are supposed to be in last place in the NL West. Nine and 17 on the road. San Diego is better on the road than Los Angeles. Oh my God! Look at this. Houston is better on the road 
than Los Angeles Dodgers. And you know what that says? That's just terrible disappointment. Houston is 12 and 16 on the road. Dodgers are 9 and 17. That is an accomplishment. Houston is 7 and 3 in the last 10. The Dodgers are 5 and 5. This doesn't really make any sense, but you know, just look at it. Dodgers have scored 208 runs this year. Houston has scored 242. It's it, it, it's great. It's great being a Giants, you know, supporter. Being able to, you know, see the stats. Real numbers. Real numbers. Let's let's take a look at the Dodgers and the Angels. They're pretty similar. Um, they're, uh, in my words, they're about a game... Uh, what's their record? Twenty three, it's twenty six and thirty four, twenty five and thirty three. They pretty much have the same record. Um, the Dodgers, they're down, uh, they haven't played. Uh, the Angels have played two more games than the Dodgers, but you know, if they combine to make a super team, they'll still be in last place. That's how I end my show. Thanks, sir. thank you very much for listening to Steven's All Baseball Show. There is bias, but. There's usually so I'm usually neutral, but when I talk about Los Angeles teams and how Sports Center and all that, and especially Sports Center, I just Sports Center needs to stop talking about you know Dodgers are gonna make a run, Angels are gonna make a run. Let's just wait and wait. Oh, they won three in a row. Oh, never mind. You know who you should start giving coverage to at Sports Center. The Arizona Diamondbacks. Because they're better than the Los Angeles Dodgers. That's how I end it all, folks. Good night, folks. From all of us, from myself, and all of us really officiating and keeping control at Spreaker.com. National Sports Radio Station. My name is Stephen Hughes, signing off. And to finish it off, is some classic Major League Baseball tunes. From back in my day, um, some of you guys probably have heard this before. It's a great ending to a great day in baseball. Uh, the show is dedicated to Earl Weaver and the great Stan Musial for those who died, for those who passed away when I was on break. Um, thoughts and prayers during that time, during their passing which unfortunately was on the same day, goes out to those families. Uh, their their time, their efforts, their memories on the baseball field will never be, never be forgotten. Thank you very much, folks. Good night.